Welcome back. So in this lesson, uh, we're going to build on the previous example we did where we had this swarm of agents, and we're going to turn that program into a drawing machine. So what I've done here is I've remixed um, the previous program. I've called it uh, Agent Painter, uh, just so we uh, start from a different sketch here and we don't lose the previous one. And uh, we're going to talk about how we, you know, different ways that we could transform this system um, into some kind of drawing machine. Now, before we get into it, we're going to make one small change uh, to our our behavior. Uh, so I have commented out here the the mouse seeking behavior. Um, we can bring that back in later on if we want to to experiment with, because uh, that could be interesting. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave it out. Uh, so I'm commenting this part out. And then we're going to go do make a little change to our um, our cohesion behavior over here. Uh, so in between recording the two lessons, I was experimenting with this a little bit. And um, I found that uh, while this works pretty well, um, it was interesting to try our, uh, our seek behavior here instead of steering. Once we find the, uh, the average position of all of the neighbors of an agent, which is what the cohesion is doing, right? It's calculating the average position of all the agents within a 50 pixel radius, uh, then, av then adding that together, averaging, right? Uh, so instead of steering, uh, what we could do is apply our uh, seek behavior, which says uh, try to follow a point. And this is a little bit less strong. Uh, it's going to com change, not completely change the swarm behavior, uh, but it changes it a little bit. Uh, so now it's a little bit more chaotic uh, because that cohesion um, behavior is uh, takes a little bit longer to get to the center of these um, of these clusters, um, and that means also that over time, like our agents, they get to kind of flow and go from in in different directions a little bit more. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting little, little tweaks. And again, the interesting uh, aspect of these behaviors is you can start to tweak them. And if you like the result, then uh, there's no you know specific uh, rules to follow here. So we're going to go with this modification here, and we're going to call that um, seek the average position uh, for our drawing exercise. Okay. So if we're talking about creating a drawing machine, um, obviously the place to start is to look at, you know, could these agents be leaving some trails as they move around? And let's see what that would look like. Um, so if we were to, for example, just comment out the background here, we could then observe um, the motion of our little rectangles uh, and see the kinds of trails that they're leaving behind. Uh, and already we kind of get it instant drawing machine just by doing that. But we're going to work on uh, just refining that a little bit more here. Um, so the uh, the first thing we could play with is we could we, we could change how we're rendering uh, each of these agents. Um, so right now we're drawing them as a box, but uh, let's see if we could play around with different forms. Uh, let me find a render function over here. Uh, so for example, for example, uh, instead of a box here, you know, we could we could replace them by a simple point, for instance, and see what that would look like. Uh, so already by you know changing from a box to a point, we get a totally different feel. And because the some points are moving kind of fast, uh, we're getting these dotted lines just because we're moving from more than one pixel in a given frame. So that also creates some texture. Um, and because of the swarm behavior, there's going to be some order and some form that's going to emerge over time from that drawing. So that's kind of neat. Uh, another thing we could try here is uh, we could draw them, you know, drawing some inspiration from the work of Casey Rios, um, you know, exp exploring different basic forms here. We could draw them uh, as a line. Now we could draw a line like this, right? We could draw a 20 pixel line from 0, 0. And uh, that line is getting rotated because of our heading, right? Um, so that looks something like that. And that's kind of interesting. Or we could also make that line, um, we could make the, the center of the line being be the center of our, um, our agent. So I'm going to start with negative uh, 20 here so that um, when the line turns, we get these kinds of uh, 
little round shapes here. All right, now this is only black and white lines, so it's not really that interesting. So let's go and grab ourselves some colors. So we're going to go to uh, our color generating um, website here. We could also, you know, using some of the previous examples, go grab an image and then uh, use that as a color source. Um, so let's look at some, uh, get some inspiration from here. I try to find a, a color palette that looks promising. Um, so this is not bad. I like this one as well. Here, let's grab this. It's got some nice contrast of colors in here. So I'm going to export that palette using code uh, just for convenience. So I can grab it as an array. And then all I'm going to have to do is uh, go and add, oops, over here. Um, I'm just going to have to go and add uh, hashtags in front of all of these colors so they they can actually be used by p5.js. Okay, so we're going to make this array called palette, and we can always go back and change these colors later on if we don't like them. Um, and now what we're going to do is give each agent uh, its own color when we create it. So that means going into our create agent function here and then adding yet another parameter. So we'll say in addition to all of these attributes, agents are also going to have a color. And that color will be selected at random from our palette. So now we're storing this color variable inside each agent, which means that when it comes time to render that particular agent, we can say set the stroke color to the agent's color. And we can let that unfold a little bit to see uh, see what it's going to look like. Cool. All right. Um, so what else could we do to play around with the uh, these visuals? Well, um, one thing we could think about doing is uh, we could try to vary the thickness of these lines, right? Maybe the stroke weight, just to give a little bit more interest to our drawing, so it's not, you know, so always so similar. Um, you know, almost this reminds me of like, you know, sort of like a Jackson Pollock kind of painting with these big streaks of paint, and uh, but they're all the same size. So let's try to see if we could vary that size over time. Um, so after we set a stroke here, uh, we could also, also play around with setting a, uh, a stroke weight. Now, there's probably lots of different ways we could vary the, the size. Um, let's try one where we might, um, we, could use, uh, we could use noise, right? So parallel noise, and we could put in frame count as an input. <clears throat> let's call that n. And then we could map, um, we could map n, which is a, noise value, so it's going to be between 0 and 1, to a thickness of the stroke between, let's say, 1 and 15, and then uh, use that as our stroke weight. So now over time, the thickness of the lines is going to get modulated, is going to vary uh, according to parallel noise as well. So it's creating slightly less, you know, um, predictable patterns. Now, currently, they're all being modulated exactly the same uh, because we're using frame count as the input to our modulation function. Uh, so if we wanted to get make each agent, uh, you know, somewhat unique in this system, we could also uh, just give them a unique number associated with them, kind of a unique ID. So in their attributes, we're going to add another number here. We're going to call it ID. Now, it doesn't matter what that number is. The, the point here is that we want it to be different for all the agents so that when we seed the noise function, or not we seed, when we put in a parameter to the noise function, we want these agents to be able to sample the noise kind of from different places so they're not all changing all at once. Um, so one quick way that we can just assign a random ID to each agent but still have it be different 
is we're going to use the frame count here. When that agent gets created, that's going to become its uh, ID or its number. And then we can take that agent's ID here into account when sampling into the uh, Perla noise space. And maybe we'll experiment with making this move a little bit less quickly. Uh, so now we should be seeing sort of lines of different thicknesses at different times. Okay, maybe that's too slow. Let's try that instead again. So now the, uh, yeah, the line thickness of all the agents should no longer be uniform. Um, there should be some variation in there because we're taking the agent ID plus the current frame count as our input to the uh, to the noise function. All right, what else could we try here? Um, now, of course, you know, noise is one way that we could put this in. Um, we could imagine, you know, n could be a random number just to see what would happen. You know, this is a lot more, a lot crazier because those lines are now varying randomly, but that also gives it an interesting feel and an interesting texture. Um, another way that we can modulate a number is we could use a, an oscillation function, like a sine wave, for example. Uh, so if we made the input to the sine function uh, be something similar to what we're doing over here, over to no, uh, the noise function, um, so the, we could use that as our, um, as our value to modulate the, the thickness of our lines. Now a sine wave, right, is going to be, have this kind of shape. Um, so a sine wave has a shape that's going like up and down with a little bit of easing and smoothing to it. And it's going to return values that are uh, between negative one and one. So we're going to adjust our mapping here to reflect that. Again, we're not actually calculating real angles here. We're just feeding a number as the input to the sine wave function uh, to get this, this sort of oscillating behavior for our line thicknesses. Um, they're now going to be um, growing and shrink shrinking, right, according to this, uh, this uh, cycling wave that we fed. So that's another way of approaching it. Now, there's probably a little bit too many of these objects for the screen space that we have, so I'm going to cut it down a little bit so we have fewer. Because I want to be able to see some of the patterns and still see some of the white space. Of course, over time, it's all going to get covered, and maybe we can address some of that through our user interface as well. Um, I'm also finding that the movement of these objects, like their lines are pretty regular and regular. Um, so I want to introduce a little bit of randomness in their movement uh, also. So we're going to create another behavior here um, just to play around with this. I'm going to add it all the way at the bottom. Uh, we're going to call this behavior uh, Twitch. And this is going to be kind of giving our agents a little bit more nervousness to them, uh, just make them move randomly. And uh, we're going to put in a strain parameter in case we want to change the weight of that twitching. And then I'm going to add a few parameters here. Uh, one will be the twitch radius. And let's set that to 90 degrees by default. And then the twitch rate. So that's going to be a number we're going to use to modulate some uh, Perlin noise. So our twitch behavior uh, is going to be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the... Um, um, the velocity, a copy of the velocity of our agent, and we're going to call that twitch direction. So I'll say agent.velocity.copy. And then once we have uh, a copy of where the direction our agent is headed in, we're going to generate a random uh, angle. Okay? Uh, so first we're going to use Perlin noise to, as a source of agent value, of uh, random values. And maybe we'll use the, this time we'll use the agent's position plus the frame count as the input. Um, and then we're going to multiply that by the twitch rate. And that just changes how quickly we move through the Perlin noise. Right? Uh, I'm going over these ideas quickly because we've done a lot of Perlin noise by now. 
Um, and you know, you can try different things. We could try the agent ID here. Um, the, the point here is just to feed different values into the noise so we don't get all the same result for every agent. Um, by using position though, we're going, we might see some interesting synchronization because it's going to be based on where they are uh, on the screen from left to right, how much uh, twitching they're going to be receiving. Um, and then we're going to map this uh, noise value to a twitch angle. So the noise is between 0 to 1, and we're going to map it to an angle between minus twitch radius and positive twitch radius. Um, so twitch radi radius being defined as one of the parameters to our twitch function. right? So the default value will be 90 degrees, uh, but then our pi over 2, but we could specify a different radius if we wanted to. Um, so now that we've created this sort of random angle driven by the Perlin noise, we're going to take our twitch direction and we're going to uh, we're going to rotate it. <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to rotate it by this uh, this amount. So what we're doing is saying, you know, take a copy of where you were going, right? Uh, randomly generate an angle, right, left or right based on Perlin noise so that it's not it's twitching but it's going to have some consistency from frame to frame um, and then change that twitch direction a little bit and then we're going to apply our steering behavior we're going to say steer the agent towards that new uh, twitch direction and we're going to pass down the strength variable we've received as a parameter uh, because ultimately this is going to get moved all the way down to apply force if you recall from the previous tutorial That should be twitch angle, not twitch rotate. Twitch rotate does not exist. All right, so let's try this. Um, let's try this behavior, see if it works. We're going to go back into draw. And uh, before we do our swarming behavior, we're also going to do some agent twitching. And uh, maybe we'll tame it a little bit. So now if we, let's put the background back in so we can see a little bit better what's happening. Um, so now in addition to doing the swarming, we can see that our agents, um, they got a little bit twitchier. Uh, they're getting randomly, you know, they keep changing their mind about where they're going to be going uh, because our twitch behavior is using parallel noise to vary their direction by a, a certain amount, right? Um, and then steering them towards these arbitrary directions over time. Uh, that's why I called it twitch, because it makes them become a little bit twitchier. Uh, but then that also results in, I think, inter more interesting group behavior, because now there's an element of randomness in there as well, so it's less, uh, a little bit less predictable. And uh, by bringing the background back, we can also see a little better um, the effect of the oscillation right, on the stroke weight. So now we can see that the stroke weight is oscillating between thin strokes and thicker strokes because of what we did inside draw here with the uh, the sine wave, and you know we could have, we could have continued playing with these other methods as well. Let's add a few controls here to our drawing machine so that it makes it a little bit easier to experiment with some of these possibilities that we have. Uh, so we're going to create a quick little um, uh, GUI, and before we do this. <coughs> and before we do this, um, we're going to first we're going to move some of these settings we want to be affecting uh, into a settings object. So some of the things we might want to be uh, tweaking, um, we have our damping variable, right? So we're going to have a damping setting. We might also want to create. Um, a variable where we um, we toggle whether or not we redraw the background, uh, so that we can we can erase the background and then bring it back uh, if we want to. And uh, we're going to make that a true or false value. And you'll see that GUI is going to know that this is a true or false value, and it will give us a little checkbox element in the GUI. So it's pretty neat. Um, and then some of the other things we might want to tweak here. Um, we have our seek behavior, 
our twitch behavior. So maybe all of the the, the different weights, the different strengths here for these behaviors, uh, those might be all interesting variables to tweak. I see I've, I've put the mouse back in, so now it's doing this. Uh, these might be all interesting values to tweak on the fly uh, to kind of get a simulation that we like. So let's create um, just, we're going to use the same name as the behavior, right? And we're going to set some defaults here, right? Twitch is going to be, actually, seek is going to be default by zero, uh, zero by default, um, and then separate. 1.5, cohesion 1, align 1. Um, and then we're going to use these variables instead in our code here, instead of the hard-coded numbers. So instead of uh, 1 here, we're going to say settings.seek. Instead of 0 0.3, we'll say oops, settings with an S. My bad. We're going to say settings.twitch. Uh, Settings dot se separate settings dot align and uh, settings dot uh, cohesion. Then we're also going to change uh, the damping in our motion behavior. We'll say settings dot damping, which means I can delete this variable now. And, uh, and then finally, we're going to use our redraw background variable to decide whether or not to redraw the background. So we'll say if um, redraw settings dot redraw background, then we're going to clear the background. And if not, we will just omit the background. So we'll have a way of toggling that option as the mm -hmm. program runs. So let's just uh, stick with these for now. There are other things we could decide to make a settings, like the the number of agents in our group. Uh, we would have to we would have to then add some code to remove the agents if we get too many, like we did in week two. Um, this is pretty open ended. We could also make these um, neighborhood, for example, uh, radiuses settings so that we could tweak them. But we're just going to work with these uh, these to begin with. Uh, so in setup, we're going to uh, create a GUI variable. And I'm going over this quickly again because this is also a little bit of a recap because we've done this a lot now in the, the tutorial series. So we'll say new that GUI. And then we're going to add our different setting names um, to the GUI. Now, redraw background doesn't need a range because it's a true or false value. And now you see that we've added this, uh, it gave us this little checkbox here in the controls. So now if we uncheck it, it stops clearing the background in draw. So we can see some kind of image emerge. And then if we um, click it, it's going to erase the background so we can look at our system underneath. And we can go back and forth between the two. This is nice because it also lets us kind of erase the background and start over because over time, these images get really, really busy. So sometimes it's nice to capture just a, a portion or a shorter amount of time. And then we're going to add the uh, the other settings. Uh, so we have the damping setting. So damping, we don't want that range get getting too low. So we're going to go between uh, 0 0.8 and 1. Uh, and then we will add the uh, seek setting. So let's say the forces, uh, we're going to give them ranges between uh, 0 and 2. And I'm going to copy and paste here to make it quicker. Uh, we're going to have Twitch separate cohesion. And I'm missing one. Align. So now we can see our default settings, right? And we can start to play around with this. Like we can now turn off the separation altogether. And you can see now they are bundling together, but without the separation behavior. Um, they start to form single lines, which can be interesting once we turn off the background, right? It's really changing the feel of our drawing machine. Uh, we can bring some separation back in, you know, reduce cohesion or really increase cohesion. We can now start to tweak these parameters a little bit more. Um, 
just to see what happens with our behaviors. We can get them really, really twitchy uh, or not twitchy at all. And if we increase the seek behavior, now we bring back following the mouse in the simulation. Uh, so we could say make the mouse bit, you know, kind of weak here. And um, yeah. Now, because this was a, actually the seek behavior I'm noticing here, the it goes from zero to one to two. Doesn't seem to have much of an in-between, although it's, it is giving me a float because this is working. If we wanted to see the float here, um, because we started at zero, we could also specify an increment here when we add the setting to the GUI. So not only we can specify a range, but also a, a number of steps, increment in number of steps. So if we do that, um, now we can increase in steps of 0 0.1, right? Because uh, by default, the steps are one, and uh, we didn't get to see the in-between values. If we start with smaller values, uh, that GUI will figure it out on its own and automatically adjust. And of course, we can close the controls and then just watch the what happens to our um, simulation. All right. Now we could also make the GUI have its um, controls closed by default because it can be kind of annoying seeing that panel. So I'm going to start with GUI.close and I'm going to start with uh, draw background equal to false. Um, now let's add one final feature to this uh, because it is constantly moving. And sometimes, you know, we have these, we might create these nice images, right? We might have some nice moments that we want to be able to capture. And uh, being able to pause our sketch for that would be kind of nice. So let's create a uh, another variable in our... Um, this one could be a setting. Let's create... A, actually, do we want to do this with the controls? Um, let's create a key press for pausing. So I'm going to make a variable here. I'm going to call it paused, and by default, it's going to be equal to false. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to implement our uh, key press function. And then we'll say if key is equal to spacebar, we'll say if paused is equal to false, right? We're going to um, pause the sketch by saying no loop, and then we'll make paused equals to true. And otherwise, we're going to start the sketch again and make paused equal to false. So now if I click inside my window and I press uh, spacebar, I now have the ability to um, pause the sketch, right? Now we can open and close the controls. Doesn't matter, we can change redraw background. Uh, I can start the sketch again with spacebar, and then I can stop it with, you know, you can't see me doing it, but I'm using the spacebar here to pause my sketch. Um, so that can be interesting because then, you know, we can kind of progress through the, the simulation here and be able to pause it and then start again and pause it. Now, um, I have to be a little bit careful here with the spacebar because if I if the last thing I clicked was <laughs> redraw background, um, that GUI selects it, right? So if I do spacebar, it allows me to toggle redraw background as well. So uh, I'm gonna go and select some other some other thing here. Um, so now I can almost like I can click on spacebar quite a bit and just uh, kind of step through the simulation to see what happens. Uh, so that could be interesting. And then to that, we could also add, you know, another key. For example, uh, if we see something that we like here, we could say if uh, if the key is equal to S, um, we could save a drawing using the save command.
we can go, okay, I'm going to pause this, and then I'd like to save that drawing. Uh, so if you do save, um, what this is going to do is going to send a download to your browser, and then uh, it's going to open this as, a, as an image file. Right? Uh, it did not include the background, so that's kind of interesting. I guess it saved it as a transparent PNG, potentially. What if I do JPEG instead? I'm gonna, it doesn't have to be paused. You can also just save at any time. The drawing. That's interesting. Okay, let's put a background and setup then. Could be because we're never actually clearing the background. Uh, and by default, we have a white background from glitch.com because uh, we set settings.redraw to be true, to be false. Let's try that one. Yeah, that's why. Um, so anyways, you can use the save command to sort of download outcomes from your um, drawing machines that way. So now we have added kind of two keys. One is to pause it, one is uh, to save. And we have some controls where we can toggle redrawing of the background, and we can also play with our simulation values. Um, for example, if we bring in some damping, now everything is much slower because there's a lot of resistance in the way these objects are moving. So they're moving much more slowly, and then if we remove the damping, it just changes the overall feel. Um, so we're going to leave it at this for this video. Um, I'm going to follow this up with another shorter, quicker video just to talk about a, another idea you might want to explore when it comes to turning these systems uh, into drawing machines, uh, which is going to be, instead of drawing the objects as just simple geometric forms like lines and rectangles and dots, uh, we're going to draw them using image assets and then see what kind of compositions we can get from that. So I'll see you in the next video.